The fine art of disappearing can be an amazing magic trick, but what about when it happens to a regular person? Join us as we have a look at some ordinary people who completely vanished. Maura Murray Now we've all had to come up with excuses for not coming into work or even handing an assignment in late, but they're rarely permanent solutions. Maura Murray was a 21-year-old student at the University of Massachusetts in 2004. Then, on February 9th of that year, she would email her employer, along with her professors, saying that she had to attend a funeral for a death in the family. As it would turn out, this would be a bogus excuse, but she definitely went away. Her plan to escape might have got off to a rough start, though, as Murray would crash her car into a tree in rural New Hampshire. Oddly enough, just two days earlier, she had crashed a separate car. Disappearing can be an expensive hobby, it would seem. A bus driver who witnessed the wreckage would ask her if she wanted to call the police, but she declined. The bus driver then called them anyway, and when they showed up ten minutes later, she had vanished. There were no signs of footprints or a struggle, which would suggest that she got picked up by someone. Twenty-four hours later, her fiancé would receive a strange phone call that went to voicemail, and it was sobbing on the other end of the line. Despite her odd behavior, Mara's family believes that she didn't disappear willingly, and after 13 years, hope for her return has all but dried up. Brandon Swanson Car accidents seem to have a role to play in more than one of our strange disappearances. 19-year-old Brandon Swanson would be driving his car in rural Minnesota in 2008, and that is when he crashed into a ditch. He then called his parents, explained the situation, and asked them to pick him up. However, when his father drove to the location of the crash, there was no sign of his son. Brandon's father then gave him a call, and Brandon answered, saying that he would try to head towards a nearby town called Lind. But why would you call your father to have him pick you up and then abandon the scene? During the call, Brandon suddenly swore, and the phone connection then cut out. And this was the last that anyone ever heard from him. Brandon's father would call the police, and then they quickly got involved. Checking the car, they found no sign of why he would leave it behind or even where he went. But some theories are that he fell into the river and drowned. Searches of all nearby rivers would turn up no trace of either him or his phone. Even to this day, Brandon's parents still leave the porch light on, just in case their son were to ever come back into their lives. Le Prince Disappearing at random isn't exactly a new phenomenon. It could actually happen to anyone. Louis Le Prince was an investor from France who's mostly famed for shooting his first motion picture. Alas, he may be just as famous for his strange disappearance. In September of 1890, Le Prince was leaving his brother's home in Dijon and heading to Paris aboard a train. However, when the train would arrive, Le Prince wasn't on it. Now, according to reports, the last that anyone saw of him would be when he was entering into his cabin after checking his luggage. That's when both he and the luggage would disappear. There were no signs of any kind of struggle, violence, or foul play, and no one even remembers seeing him outside of his cabin. The train windows were firmly closed, and it would have been close to impossible for Le Prince to have escaped through them. However, as unlikely as his clandestine escape was, suicide seems to have been ruled out. Le Prince was en route to America to patent his new inventions. And from these new inventions, he would have made a tidy fortune and a near endless amount of fame from them. Michael Negret. Now, if you're going to disappear on purpose, you will probably want to bring appropriate footwear. On December 10th of 1999, 18-year-old Michael Negret would log off of an online video game at 4 in the morning. His college roommate then woke up at 9 a.m. to find him gone. Now, despite his apparent absence, all of Michael's possessions were still in the room, including his wallet, his keys, and even his shoes. Police dogs would be able to track his scent to a nearby bus stop, but it was over two miles away from campus. Now, could he have actually walked there without his shoes? There was an unidentified man that was seen on campus around 4.30 in the morning of Michael's disappearance. 
But unfortunately, this is the only lead in a case that has been cold for over a decade. Michael's mother still refuses to give up hope, and she spends her time actively warning UCLA students that the same situation could befall them if they aren't careful. Barbara Bolick Barbara Bolick was a 55-year-old hiker from Montana who went on a trip in the Bitterroot Mountains with Jim Romaker in July of 2007. While on the trail, Jim paused at a scenic outlook toward Bear Creek to take in the sight. And then, according to Jim, Barbara was no more than 20 feet behind him, and when he turned around, she had completely vanished. Now, apparently Jim had turned away for less than a minute when this mysterious disappearance occurred. He would then call in the authorities, and an extensive search would be conducted of the area, turning up no sign of Barbara Bullock. Naturally, the police would be suspicious of Jim, as he was, well, the only one around at the time, and his story doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But Jim was incredibly cooperative with the authorities, and let's face it, if he were guilty, he might have tried to come up with a more believable story. So after further investigation, they would rule him out as being any part of Barbara's disappearance. Now, after 10 years, there's still no sign of any kind of foul play or of Barbara Bullock herself. Brian Schaefer Some people go out drinking to forget their problems, but rarely does it work out so completely. Brian Schaefer was 27 years old and a medical student at The Ohio State University, and on April 1st of 2006, he simply disappeared. Brian would be drinking heavily at a bar called the Ugly Tuna Saluna, and sometime between 1.30 and 2 a.m., he just simply vanished. Bartenders do remember seeing him talking to his girlfriend on his cell phone, and then he was last seen in the company of two women, but nobody remembers anything about him after this. But perhaps the strangest part of this April Fool's Day disappearance is how Brian was even able to exit the bar unnoticed. The bar features heavy surveillance on all of the exits, and yet there was no footage that Brian had been leaving. His family shared that Brian was deeply upset about his mother's recent death just two weeks prior, but they don't believe that he disappeared on his own. Jason Jolkowski while a disappearance can be a harrowing and terrifying experience for the victim's family, it can also lead to something much more. 19-year-old Jason Jolkowski was called in early to his job on June the 13th of 2001 in Omaha, Nebraska. He would then call a friend to pick him up at a nearby high school. When the friend would arrive, there was no sign of Jason. A neighbor recalls the last sighting of Jason being about a half an hour before he was to meet his friend and Jason was pulling trash cans into his garbage. Surveillance footage at the high school would show that Jason never even made it there. Nothing in Jason's life would logically lead to his willing disappearance, and no one has any idea what's happened to him, even 16 years later. In 2003, Jason's family would officially memorialize their son, but they wanted to make sure that something like this wouldn't happen to anyone else's child. That's when they began Project Jason, a not-for-profit organization that is one of the most useful and prominent resources for the family of missing persons. Jason may have left without a trace, but his disappearance has left a mark on those who loved him, and his organization continues to work in his name. April Fab In Norfolk, England, one of the more famous British disappearances of all time would take place in a very narrow window of time. On April 8, 1969, 13-year-old April Fab would leave her Metten home to visit her sister in the nearby village of Rotten. She got on her trusty bicycle and pedaled into oblivion. She would last be seen riding on a country road by a truck driver at approximately 6 minutes past 2 p.m. Then, at 12 past 2, her bicycle would be found in the middle of a nearby field a few hundred yards away by two survey workers and of her, there would be no sign. Sadly, abduction seems to be the only likely possible explanation, but the kidnapper would have had such a small window of opportunity to take her. The six minutes between the sightings make it a strange and terrifying disappearance. Extensive countryside searches were made for the 13-year-old, but nothing hinted as to where she actually was. 
Because of the similarities between April's case and another young British girl named Jeanette Tate who disappeared in 1978, the notorious child murderer Robert Black was considered a suspect. However possible that is, there's nothing that conclusively links him to the case of April Fab, and to this day, it still remains unsolved, all these decades later. Nicole Morin Possibly the largest police investigation in Toronto, Canada's history would take place over the horrific disappearance of Nicole Morin. On July 30th of 1985, eight-year-old Nicole would leave her mother's penthouse apartment. After picking up the mail in the lobby at 10.30 a.m., Nicole was then to meet her friend at the building's pool to go swimming. She said goodbye to her mother, and 15 minutes later her friend would buzz in to ask where she was. Nicole never arrived and would never meet her friend. After an extensive citywide search, the most plausible theory is that someone abducted her immediately after she left the apartment. The fact that the building was 20 stories high makes matters even more complicated, and the fact that the perpetrator didn't leave a trace is incredibly strange. Authorities say it would be nearly impossible to get her out of the building undetected. A neighboring tenant would report that they saw Nicole get to the elevator, but unfortunately, it was the last sight that anyone ever had of the eight-year-old. Over 30 years later, and no trace of Nicole has ever been found. Annie Schmidt In October of 2016, Annie Schmidt, the daughter of the Piano Guys member John Schmidt, disappeared after going hiking in Oregon after recently moving there from Utah. She would be last seen by her roommate on a Sunday afternoon and was reported missing on Wednesday. It was reported that Annie had previously enjoyed her hiking adventures and had bought a new tent and backpack.